Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us once again on the State of Freedom. Moms for Liberty East Baton Rouge Parish Chapter is dedicated to fighting for the survival of America by unifying, educating, and empowering parents to defend and take back their parental rights at all levels of government. To learn more or to get involved with Moms for Liberty East Baton Rouge, email momsforlibertybatonrouge at gmail.com. That's moms, the number four, Liberty Baton Rouge at gmail.com. The email address is on the Patriot page of our website, freedomstate.us, and it's in the show notes. A friend of the show, a constitutional attorney, a scholar, and a gentleman, Mr. Paul Loy Hurd is joining us today. He has been busy since the end of the legislative session, developing a plan that he believes will make Louisiana economically competitive and a relevant player in the modern South. Before we talk to Paul, let me read the scripture of the day. It's Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10. And it says, Faith motivated Abraham to obey God's call and leave the familiar to discover the territory he was destined to inherit from God. So he left with only a promise and without even knowing ahead of time where he was going. Abraham stepped out in faith. He lived by faith as an immigrant in his promised land as though it belonged to someone else. He journeyed through the land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who were persuaded that they were also co-heirs of the same promise. His eyes of faith were set on a city with unshakable foundations, whose architect and builder is God himself. And as believers, all of us at some point in life are called to leave the familiar behind and step out in faith to do something or go somewhere because of the tug of the Lord in our hearts. In my experience, making the leap and stepping into the change has tended to be the easy part. It's keeping my eyes on the promise and on the Lord in the process, three months later, six months later, two years later, five years later, that requires strength and conviction. But the work of keeping a heart full of faith and continuing to trust in the Lord is the process and the work of a believer. It's the work that Abraham modeled and so many other saints whose names are written in Hebrews chapter 11. So my encouragement today is to allow the call of God to mark you so deeply that you can't be dissuaded from your position and from the direction he's put in your heart to go. Keep your eyes laser focused on the Lord and his instruction. Refuse to allow your feet to move from the path he's put you on unless and until he gives you a new direction. You know, Danielle, what grasps me about Hebrews, about the scripture this morning, the main thing that jumps out is that you know, Abraham left and went off, not really knowing where he was going, which tells me that he really didn't have a full understanding of what God's plan was, yet he stepped out in faith. So many of us wait until we feel like we have all the answers, everything is secure, the path is absolutely predictable before we move forward. And for that reason, many people never move forward. They never do anything because God is always asking us to step forward in faith. And he very rarely lays out in detail exactly how we're going to get to where he wants us to get to. And that's where the faith comes in. And so I love the call to to step out in faith and to move forward, even when we don't know exactly how things are going to be done. God always knows. And speaking of, of stepping out in faith, Paul Hurd, the longtime constitutional attorney, what a renowned figure in the legal community and in our state. And Paul, I'm reading about this morning about your gold, Louisiana gold standard, which you've obviously spent a lot of time on to create prosperity in our state. I can't wait to get into that. Thank you so much for joining us today on the State of Freedom. Well, thanks for having me. I I really... I don't know that I've spent as much time as a casual lifetime reaching the point of what can we do in Louisiana to make us as prosperous as we, if you look at all of our assets and all of our opportunities, why are we not as prosperous and as enjoyable and as uh, motivated a state as everyone else in the South, we've, we've got beautiful weather. We've got a beautiful culture. We've got from, from North Louisiana to South Louisiana, East and West, and we flounder. We economically flounder. And 
I think the good news right now is that we have at least by the elections of 2023 realized we cannot stay and continue to do our governmental structures the way we've done them because they have proven to make Louisiana the absolute Southern failure as a society. I mean, this isn't a football game. This is life. I'm not trying to score so that I beat Notre Dame. I'm trying to score so that my children stay home. I'm trying to score so that so that we have a growing, vibrant uh, enhancement of what we were given by God and given by our own histories. And so I know we've reached a point where we know we're wrong. I love I love the the, the quotes from Hebrew because. Now what Louisiana needs to do, now that we know we're not where we belong, we've got to step out. We've got to take that step out, use our brain, use our logic. Abraham didn't go in the wilderness and forget how to hunt and how to eat and how to feed his people, but but he did step out. And so you couldn't have picked a better biblical verse. And you're a, and honestly, Paul, you're a you are a uh, personification of that with what you're doing right now. You, you called uh, the out migration. It's just a term that Danielle and I both love. The massive out migration from Louisiana, an economic cancer. When you look at that, why is it fundamentally that so many people are? I mean, Danielle and I both have friends and family who've left Louisiana. Your kids have left the state of Louisiana, as you indicated before. Why fundamentally are people leaving the state? Is there one issue or is it a, is it a, a host of issues? Well, interestingly, two things. Uh, long term, uh, 10 years ago, even more than that, PAR, Public Affairs Research Council, did a study. We had an out-migration problem over a decade ago, and it's continued. They did a study of who was leaving. And ironically, the people, if you had a high school education, you were more likely to leave than someone without a high school education. If you had a college education, you were more likely to leave than the one who only had high school. And then when you went to the college degrees, same or postgraduate, it all worked the same. In other words, those that were the most energetic, most motivated, most educated and pursuing their prosperity and their life stream, their American dream, they were the most likely to leave because we didn't have those opportunities growing in Louisiana. And it's a chicken and egg problem. And now we've got no chickens. I gather that kind of what you're saying here is that in Louisiana, being well-educated, being energized, being motivated is sort of a useless commodity as our state is currently structured and, and the way the condition of our state? Oh, I, what's interesting about state government has alleged that our problem is that our people are not educated and that if we will educate our workforce, that it will attract business to Louisiana. It won't because we have corporate taxes higher than any of the Southern states. We've got taxes on inventory that other, think about if you're Amazon and you're moving inventory around. If you move it through Louisiana, we're going to tax it. If you move it through Texas, it doesn't get taxed. And so what happens is it drives every sliver of these different anti-business tax programs, drive business out. And so what happens is that all those opportunities disappear and the people that have the best ability to grow business to be successful, and, and it ripples around you. People who are doing well buy homes. People that buy homes buy cars. And you don't have to be the one that's making the money to be the salesman that sells cars or that develops a lot. And this is important when we start talking about the gold standard. Money is a multiplier. And what we do is we are driving out human capital and we're driving out monetary capital because we mistreat it versus other places. If you were walking through the jungle and there was a easy path to walk, 
that was going to let me get to my destination, would you take it or would you would you slog your way through the jungle with a machete? <laughs> the answer is you're investing in your own life. You've only got one life. I'm going to go do the best I can. And what's happened is cumulatively we've driven those people out. And now the good news is they're easy to bring back. They're, Tell us how to do that. Make it prosper. Make it livable and prosperous, and they shall return. Amazing. Would you tell us a little bit more about your vision on how to fix the out-migration and how to make Louisiana the competitive player that it has every right to be, has every resource to be? We're just not hitting the marks. Right. And it's sort of funny is that our our leg, and the reason I wrote this is because the legislatures have talked about what we need to do. Oh, we, you know, we, we, I, we know that personal income tax repealing it sure did work in Texas, sure did work in Tennessee, is killing us in South Carolina and in Florida. Oh, but we can't afford it. Oh, you don't, you don't, you're not willing to step out. Cutting taxes, if, if there's a simple e- economics 101, if you tax it, it will shrink. If you don't tax it, it will grow. It's just economics. And so that's where we are. And so what I did was this, and I really, my wife will kill me and I'm going to do it anyway. I'll pay somebody a thousand bucks if they can come up with 10 items that would make Louisiana better than these 10 gold standards. The simple answer is, if we just do what is obviously, objectively effective to get our people home and our businesses home, we'll get a multiplier coming back. We'll get that success, and we'll get it quickly because the people we drove out, we drove out and they left reluctantly. We've got a social, cultural mix here in the state that nobody can match in the South, but you can't live here. And so that's where the gold standard came from. And that's to simply say, let's quit talking about what we might want the court to sort of do. All that does is feed stagnation. If you've got a better 10, I want to see it. Here's my 10. They're my gold standard. If we do these, we will reverse out migration in less than a year, probably in six months. Wow. I'm excited to share a fantastic opportunity for State of Freedom listeners who are interested in investing in precious metals or even starting a home-based business in the precious metals industry. Metal Stacks is a precious metals collector's club where you can buy your metals at the best prices on the market, actual dealer cost. They are beating the big sites. They have no credit card fees and no minimums. If you're just interested in purchasing metals at a great price, visit metalstacks.com forward slash D Walker. Get to shopping. That helps me out. I get the commission. You can also refer people to Metal Stacks for an additional income. If you're interested in learning about the referral business aspect of Metal Stacks, email me directly at danielle at freedomstate.us for more information. Paul, you talk about among your items in the gold standard requiring the sunset of the 0.45 sales tax. Obviously, you just mentioned repealing the personal income tax, reducing severance taxes by 50% to regrow and revitalize oil and gas, and then the tort reform and the auto insurance. People ask if we do all these things, how do we make up the shortfall? How do we do these things without hitting the taxpayer in other areas? And it sounds to me like your position is, if we do these things, we're going to attract so many new people to Louisiana, so many new businesses to Louisiana, that that we will more than make up any shortfall that may occur by taking these steps. That's exactly right. When we cut personal income taxes out, the money that... Think about this. If we said, we're not going to tell you how we did it. We're just going to give everyone in the state a 5% pay raise. What do you think it would do for the economy? Oh, it would it would be a boom. We'd be selling cars. We'd be buying new homes. Uh, we'll be sending more children to school and educating them. You hit on it. What, what you'll get from the legislators 
is they will only talk about the loss of their revenue. They'll never talk about that the money didn't leave. What is the multiplier that every economics teacher will tell you you would get? Even more certainly, certainly. What do you think happened in Texas? You think they shrunk? Do you think they came up short of revenue? Do you think they did in Tennessee, Florida? Not exact. You can't. It's not a zero-sum game. What the legislature wants to do is nothing. They got elected in a status quo. They're, they've got, they're succeeding in the status quo. They like the size of our economic pie because they're getting enough pie. The answer is we need more pie. We need our children back. And, and it worked in every state where it's been tried. I'll tell you, Paul, that I'll gently disagree with you for a second when you say that that these these candidates were elected on the status quo, I can tell you from personal experience that many of these candidates were elected as a, a central part of their platform was reducing taxes, reducing taxes, reducing the tax burden on Louisiana citizens and on Louisiana business. Yet they get there and there's very, very little talk in the legislature. Believe me, I'm there every day during the session. And there's very little talk and very little real effort to do what they say they were going to do and were champion, championing when they ran for office. And so you're exactly right. They have done very, very little except talk about it while they're running for office. Well, and I'll stand corrected. You're exactly right. The other reason I feel like it's time, is that there is a group that got elected this time, a new group in the House and some in the Senate that did just what you said. They recognize, they now accept. You got to understand for a decade, our legislature would not accept the fact that our business personal tax structure in Louisiana was a ineffective in gathering revenue and it was killing business. They wouldn't even accept it. We finally, no one can deny it anymore. And you're exactly right in the sense that they now have said, we know this is the cancer. Well, if it's killing you, you better get rid of it. And so that's where we're, I agree with you. And I think part of this is to say, look, let's don't argue about everybody's vision of perfect. Let's get a golden standard, change what we know will benefit us because it benefited every other state. Now, let me mention one thing. I'm not saying that on the first month after you repeal these taxes that you'll have enough in migration to pay what you lost that, that month. Part of our problem in Louisiana is that we have lost population for a decade and our budgets are 25% bigger. Our budget is too big for our bridges. And so what part, and I, I commend the governor on this, the governor has said as part of the issue of how do we deal with this temporary tax that was adopted 10 years ago that's all, you know, for a 10 year old, that wasn't temporary. That was a lifetime. Exactly. So, uh, but they're going to let it sunset. So that's the start. And let's just talk about why that's valuable. We've got the highest sales taxes by a state in the nation. You want your reputation back? Get off the sales tax mountain and come down to normal sales tax taxation. But part of what the governor and part of my gold standard, I've got the next article that comes out shows how we can pay for it. You pay for it with the multiplier, but you pay for it by the governor taking a budget that has bloated itself over 10 years and cut it back by 10, no, 2%, 2. Now, every one of us has been hit with inflation in the last four years that has increased our cost at home above 15, 18, 19%.
cut it, Governor, 2% of state revenue. Now, the reason we say that is we get state revenue. We spend it by getting matching funds by the from the Fed. And so we've got a little bit of state money, our tax money, that we need to cut 2% so that we're not spending that 2%. It will reduce the budget more than 2%. But what we're trying to do is say, we as a state can afford to cut our shopping at government's grocery store by 2%. Let me just mention this. Last year, we, we projected that we were going to cut 30% of our residents off Medicaid, the, the expanded Medicaid, and they didn't qualify, and the federal government made us keep them on during COVID. And we were in the process of cutting them back. If you'll take the money that we are going to save by just eliminating people who don't qualify, and that process is ongoing, don't take that money and spend it again. Take that money as a savings, and you take the, the, the money that last week, an article came out and said that we put, I remember the fight in the legislature over the subsidy for the film industry, and they got, I think, $200 million. They're only having 35% of it being committed to anybody who wants it. So there's a 65% of that $200 million savings that's laying in the bank. What I'm saying is if you'll just take your Medicare savings and you'll take your film savings, you've paid for your sales tax cut. There, there is no, the only, what we've got to say is we have to shrink the feast in Baton Rouge. We've got, we, we cannot afford what we've built. And, and the Baton Rouge's last excuse for building it was, oh golly, if I take $2 of tax money from Louisiana, I can get $8, or I take $200 million from Louisiana, I can get a billion from the feds. But let's just finish out the story. What hell always happens? Next year, we have to bring in $3 to get our $8 from them, and now it's 7 Then we have to bring in 4 what happens is they know if you create a government program, it is hard to set it aside. The answer is I couldn't, I could only afford a Cadillac when they would sell me it at a Chevy price. And the answer is if they're not giving away Cadillacs anymore, I've got to just say they're the fool, not me. I'm going to save my money and spend it a better way. And part of it is to get our grandchildren back. And Paul, how do we get the legislature on board with this? Because we saw last session where everyone had campaigned on getting rid of the state income tax, as Chris said, and then when the rubber came to meet the road, nobody was willing to do what it took. Well, and part of what I put in my, my gold standard is Neil Reiser's bill that does just that. We had someone willing to stand up and propose That's right. it. There probably were a few, but they weren't in that committee. Yeah. Well, well they, they weren't in that committee because the leadership wanted to make sure they weren't. Yeah. Paul, I was there. Just so you'll know, Paul, I was down there on behalf of LACAG, Louisiana Citizen Advocacy Group. And I testified in favor of, of Senator Reiser's, uh, Representative Reiser's bill. He was sitting right next to me. And, uh, you know, I got the distinct impression that the committee while they didn't want to sit there and, and go on record saying that, that they don't want to uh, eliminate the personal income tax, they, they were hesitant about doing it. And the committee didn't even take a vote on it. The chairman of the committee did say in principle she was for it. But Representative Reiser and I were sitting there and they, they didn't even vote on it. I'm, it. It's like they're afraid to take action on this. And so I wanted to ask you, what are the special interests that will be affected if this is done? Are there special interest groups who are benefiting from uh, personal income tax in Louisiana? They're, they're benefiting from a bloated checkbook in Baton Rouge. 
you know, there's, there's nothing we can do about it. And one reason I put out the gold standard is we've had a series of uh, legislative joint committee meetings about automobile insurance. We're, we're 25% higher than anybody else. It's just stupid. I mean, come on, guys. It's obvious we've got a problem. And the problem's in our judiciary. The problem is in our tort system is grossly over-yielding recovery of dam fictional damages. Uh, they don't exist in other states. I don't believe they exist here. But back to your question, who's benefiting from it? And that is that once they have it, one of the most difficult people, if you go back to last year, we had, now remember, our sales tax cut this year, if we just let it sunset, is about $450 million. We had declared last year $2 billion in surplus from last year and the surplus from the year before. And we had our legislature, two thirds of them on each house, each chamber, had to vote to approve the spending or it could not be spent. It would have gone into the rainy day trust fund. And if it had gone into the rainy day trust fund, there's a trigger in law today that would have given us an income tax cut immediately. The concept being, if we're making too much money and we've got this rep, this, this surplus revenue, put it in the rainy day and quit taxing people while we don't need it. They would not put it in there because if they had, they'd have had to give it back next year, this year. And so what, what we've got, the, and, and it's, in my, it's in my gold standard plan, one of the biggest advocates for big tax in Baton Rouge is your local government. Because they go to Baton Rouge and they, get, they go begging and they go get their little pro, their project and they get their money back because they don't have the money here. What I put in the gold standard, I solved that. What I said is this, let, let the sales tax expire so it lowers total sales tax. Now, the state has a limit on sales taxes that it can charge. The locals are given a, a ceiling below which is what they can charge for sales tax. Part of the proposal, number eight, is take a quarter of a percent of sales tax that presently goes to the state and lower the ceiling that the state can collect so that they can't collect that quarter percent anymore. At the same time, raise the ceiling for the locals and give them that quarter cent. Taxpayers pay nothing extra, but instead of our locals having to support income taxes in Baton Rouge so they can get their drainage program in Homa or in Monroe, you give them the money, you give the locals the money, and what we get out of it is not political reward from Baton Rouge. What you're gonna get is local government actors police juries, what parish presidents, parish councils, cities, they're going to debate where that quarter percent ought to go. And it'll be much wiser spent because what we'll have is local control for the highest priority local program, not who do you know in Baton Rouge. And again, that helps take the pressure off Baton Rouge to hold on to their money Look, this is a double whammy on Baton Rouge. We want our income taxes back so we can grow the economy. We want some sales taxes to go back to the locals so they can grow our communities and get the politic out of it, get the Huey Longism out of it. So the program is well designed to help us get rid of this excess taxation. And just so just to come back to that earlier question, how do we get the legislature on board with this? Because they their incentives are very much in direct opposition to this, it seems. Well, what, uh, their political, their political, uh, their incentives. political instincts would be against. Yeah. 
Prosperity is, is, is a wonderful thing to pursue. And my answer simply is this. I'm proposing this now because if we have, if we have the legislative joint committees meet on tort reform, now tort reform is in this too, but it's taxation and insurance rates and sales taxes. We are grossly on the wrong side of those three issues. And they are the tax foundation national firm put out a one in my email today, put out another report that says there's no question that if you'll lower these taxes, it has a positive effect on interstate, intrastate migration to whoever is lower. It works. It's been confirmed. And so the point is this, the gold standard is out there to say this, and this is why I said my thousand dollar bet. Give me 10 more that we can vote yes or no. If you vote to amend, you're voting no. If you vote to substitute, you're voting no. What I want is a, is a gold standard by which I'm going to measure my legislators, and we will know whether they're willing to step out in economic faith to prosper Louisiana. I'm glad you asked that. The answer to this is, if there's something better, we need to know now. Every one of these acts exists in the legislature today. Paul, it, it is really, this really comes down to a, a fundamental choice on the part of our leaders in the legislature. Are you willing to pursue an agenda that involves real reform, returning revenue to the citizens, their own money, creating prosperity, getting businesses to the state, getting people to return to the state, or do you not have the courage to do that? And are you going to stick with the way we've been doing things for the past 10, 20, 30 years that obviously don't work? So it's a great opportunity for us to really determine who the real leaders are and who are not, and an opportunity for them to actually do what they said they wanted to do when they were running for office. Yeah, let's not argue over amendment to paragraph six sub B. Let's talk about yes or no to let our sales tax get out of the stratosphere. Let's vote to give our local government the ability to care for our local community without the political influence from someone influencing Monroe that's from Homa or Monroe's legislators affecting what goes to Homa. That's not a rational way. Dare to be great. And we can be. We love this idea and we're energized by it. We believe in the merit of it. And the call for our call to action for our listeners today is to send this episode to your legislators. Let them listen to it. Ask them to support it. And we will be making a call to action on the LACAG Action Center. So if you want this to be super simple, just go to LACAG.org, visit the Action Center, and send the link. Just send a message right on to your representative, to your state senator. And Paul, we want to make sure that these legislators have the opportunity to get directly in touch with you to talk to you about this. How could they do that? You can reach me at a couple of emails. You can get me at paul at Louisiana Excel, E X C E L dot org, or Excel, E X C E L at Louisiana Excel dot org. Either one of them come to me. We've got a website that's Louisiana Excellence dot org, and it has our whole platform of what this organization is promoting, and it included the reduction of sales tax, reduction of personal injury tax, uh, personal income taxation. And the idea of, of we have to get our local governments satisfied with, think about it, they're going up to, we're paying, you said it earlier, we pay taxes, they go to Baton Rouge, then we send all our locals up to Baton Rouge or down to Baton Rouge, whichever the direction is, to go beg to get our money back. The sales tax just gives it back to us and says, we'll make our own decisions. Our legislatures won't decide 
on our drainage, our, our police jury will. Exactly. Look, I have a goal in life to get rid of the munis- the municipal, the local municipal parochial affairs committee in both chambers. I think it's called something different in the House and the Senate. But the point is, the state doesn't need to be deciding local affairs, period. The localities need to be deciding local affairs. If there's some overarching things, parishes need to decide that among themselves. You know, The, 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 the biggest antagonists, the, 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 the ones who do not support cutting income tax are your police jurors because they're at the end of the beg line. If there's no, if there's nothing going into Baton Rouge, they have no way to go get it. And they know if we cut taxes, they don't get those taxes. And that's why the imbalance is a legitimate concern, but we need to get that balance shifted back toward the locals and the voters and let Baton Rouge deal with state issues not every issue, including the cost of cigarettes inside the convenience store. Uh, we, we've got to do better than that. I think we're in a real 1776 moment where people are starting to wake up to the fact that we need to decentralize every aspect of governance, because that's the way that we actually do return power to the people, accountability to the people. Again, my challenge to all of us is I'm not telling you that, that this is the only plan But when we get to this legislative session, we don't need it to go into a debate about each subsection. We need to repeal taxes. We need to reallocate taxes to the locals. We need yes or no. We don't need, because what happens is if you you decide that there's one paragraph that you don't like, as an excuse to vote no, it's an easy way to not know who is your friend and who's your enemy. And, and if I can, let me just say one thing real quick. The, the structure of this to say, say yes, say no, but don't amend it is because the other thing that's frustrating is we just had a legislative session and they didn't do anything to help sell sales taxes. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything to repeal personal income taxes. And we don't know who did or didn't support it. You don't know who your supporters are or are not. Paul, that not to interrupt you, but that is the reason you just hit the nail on the head. That is the reason why there was no vote in the Ways and Means Committee, despite the fact that Representative Reiser presented his bill. I testified in favor and there was no record action taken on the bill at all. And that's the other strategy here is vote yes vote no, and we'll know where you stand. But we're not, that's why we need a gold standard going into the session saying, no guys, we've got bills already written. Say it, they don't need to be regurgitated, reground up. Say yes, say no. If you say no, we're gonna go get somebody who will say yes. Absolutely. The great Paul Hurd on the state of freedom today. Paul, by the way, uh, somebody mentioned you earlier within the Senate, uh, same sentence as retirement. It doesn't sound like you're going to be doing much retirement. You're just shifting gears a bit. Thank you for what you are doing for us. And, and we just look forward to working with you on this and getting our groups behind it and getting some real good things done economically for the citizens of our state. Thank you very much for having me. If there's anyone out there that has a little civic group, Republican group, Democratic group, I don't care. I'd love to be a speaker and come explain the gold standard and how we can get our grandchildren back. Beautiful. Thank you, Paul. And look, we'll be including your Hayride articles in the show notes. We'll be including the links you mentioned and your email address as well. All right. I appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Have a wonderful day. God bless America. Thanks for joining us today on The State of Freedom. Be sure and check out the show notes for this episode. You can always go there and find the calls to action and resources mentioned in the show. And you can find out more information about our advertisers there as well. If you want to learn more about us or support our work, visit freedomstate.us. To get involved with Louisiana Citizen Advocacy Group, visit lacag.org. We'll see you next time. God bless.